something spectacular. This is a new train station called Haramein train station Mecca. We are going to Medina. Oh, it's train to Medina. It's beautiful. We are in the Medina train going to Medina from Mecca. We're gonna be stopping over at Jeddah where this whole train is gonna fill up. Right now it's fairly empty. As you can see, there's not a lot going on. I gotta say, it's a very, very nice train. It's like one of the trains that you see in Europe when you're traveling to Italy and Switzerland and areas. I like the pattern that they got going on over here. It's very um, Arabesque and Islamic architecture. They got some really cool amenities here in the light. Let's see. We got a nice little table here right, for glasses. Opens up pretty good and uh, just relax and take in the views. The infrastructure in Saudi Arabia is growing at breakneck speed. Connecting the whole country with high speed rail is a crucial step towards greater prosperity. Only a few decades ago, people used to use camels to travel from Mecca to Medina, traveling hundreds of kilometers. And today, you see a bullet train cutting across the Arabian desert. at Medina station brand new station well not brand new I think it's like two or three years old wow so pretty I like it oh they actually did this I see okay so I see what the difference is Mecca they have used gold as the motif in Medina they're using green to signify the dome of the Prophet's mosque We're in the Bulman. This is Obeik at 11 p.m. at night. If I get my order right, I'll be a miracle on its own. Currently standing in line to place my order. Then I'm gonna stand in line to get the order. That's what I'm gonna get. We are now Entering Majid al Nabawi. That's the famous green dome. Oh, beautiful. This is truly a really beautiful design. When it's closed, it looks like those. When it opens up, it looks like that. Really nice. If they have a system where they actually capture any rain and goes into a reservoir, that would be even smarter. Wow. MashaAllah. Look at this. That is a famous green dome. Well done. So this is like the original, the OG part of, of the Prophet's Mosque. And basically this minar was actually created by the Ottoman Empire. Very Ottoman-esque type of architecture. And I think that dome was also erected by the Ottoman Empire. It's a very historical, I mean like, it just shows like, you know, all the different powers that came um, that contributed to the, the growth of this mosque. a lot of Turkish influence. Going for Asar prayers. One mistake I made is that you should always bring a plastic bag with you so you can keep put away your shoes. This is Abu Bakr al Siddiq gate. 
And this is the old school mosque, the original Ottoman mosque that they built. Ottoman Mamluk as well, I think. Masjid al-Nabawi, or also known as the Prophet's Mosque, is a ginormous complex that can hold up to a million worshippers. And depending on where you decide to stay, it can mean how easy it is for you to access some of the most important parts of the mosque. One of the most important parts of the mosque is here. This is where the original mosque was built. And this is also where the Prophet's tomb and his companion's tombs are located, the mosque. It is also a walking distance to the Al-Baqi Cemetery, where a lot of prominent companions and historical figures have been buried. We decided to book our hotel within a five minute walking distance to this part of the mosque. If you have elderly women in your group, it's best that you try to stay on the north side of the mosque area because this is where most of the women's entrances are located. You could try to stay in other areas as well as all these hotels provide a 15 minute shuttle ride. But if you want to be in walking distance to this, then it's best that you try to stay on the north side where a lot of good hotels and good shopping areas are located. This whole area is well designed uh, for worshippers to come and perform their religious duties and it is nicely surrounded by a lot of hotels and shopping areas. It's the Prophet's Mosque at night. It's Isha time. We gotta make some wudu because I broke it like 17 times. This is where Battle of Uhud happened. That is the mountain of Uhud. This is when the Meccan army came to fight against the people of Medina. And this is where they made their stand. Just to think that this is where an actual battle took place. We're literally standing on the ground where people are here as tourists, taking photographs with their loved ones, you know, just kind of taking in the sights and sounds, paying for some tour, tour guide to come and take a look at this. This is exactly where hundreds of people lost their lives. A lot of blood was shed on this land. Like I said earlier, there's, there were supposed to be 50 archers that were placed there and the Prophet said, do not move from the spot until I tell you to. But they moved. That put the whole army in disarray. This is the first battle that Muslims lost. You know, for us to be standing here on this ground, some very, very prominent people whose blood has spilled on this ground. Like for example, Hazrat Thamsa, who was the uncle of the Prophet, who protected him when the Quraysh tribe was actually persecuting him. When he was killed, Abu Sufyan's wife, who is uh, Hind, she actually hated him so much that she actually cut open his chest, took out his heart, and took a bite out of his heart. So, pretty violent, gory, disgusting stuff. He didn't deserve that, number one. He's, the guy's dead, you know? You don't desecrate a body like that. It's an amazing part of our history that is a sad part, but also a big lesson that we, we, can, we can learn from it. So, behind, you see right there, the Mount Hood. Behind us, you see the mountain where the archers were set up. And this is where the battle actually happened. And this area where they've gated off, this is where a lot of the martyrs were buried. So there are at least 70 companions of the Prophet that are actually uh, buried here. And there are very strict laws as to what people do here. A lot of people come here and they start praying and this and that, which is strictly prohibited. A lot of uh, Jews also helped the Prophet to fight against the Meccans who were coming to take the city. A lot of Jews are also buried here, apparently. That's actually something that a lot of people don't know about. We're at a good 
Cure Farm, which is a dates farm farm. And we're gonna be picking out some dates. We really wanted to visit a date farm in Medina, as the dates here are famous all around the world. Very good too. You like it? Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Mm. This one has like a, like a pruny taste to it. A little bit of sour taste to it. You want to eat that one? Yeah. <laughs> These guys are sorting the harvest. It's beautiful. This is top grade stuff. Top grade seating. Okay, I was joking about the seating, but this actually is top grade. Oh, what's up with these ducks? Go, 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 go. Go say hi to the ducks. This is the harvest of dates from this tree. They got some ducks here to clean up all the mess, I guess. This right here yeah. is the irrigation system to water all the palm trees. Palm. And they have that going everywhere. We're now headed to the infamous Vadi Ejin. Many have claimed to have experienced paranormal phenomena here. This is the territory of the jinn, a malicious spirit creature that is mentioned in the Quran and other cultures. Why is that jinn coming in? We are in the Vadi -e Jin. Let's see if we can experience something that is truly out of this world. <laughs> 